Othello. Othello is unusual among Shakespeare's tragedies. Unlike Hamlet or Julius Caesar, its leading characters are not kings or great figures from history, but army officers and their wives. Othello's tragedy rests in a terrible result of jealousy. Othello, a general, is led to suspect that his wife, Desdemona, is having an affair with his best friend, Cassio. It is the character Iago, one of Shakespeare's most ruthless, ruthless villains, that plans to see through doubt and jealousy in Othello's mind. Iago is angry that Othello has not promoted him. He plots to make Desdemona look guilty, and Othello cannot bear the thought that his wife has deceived him. His overwhelming jealousy drives him to action. As our scene begins, Desdemona has been ordered to her room by her husband Othello. She and her waiting and lady, she and her lady waiting, Amelia, discuss Othello's mood and ponder if there really are women that are not loyal to their husband. Than he did. He says he will return in continent and half the women need to go to bed and bidding to dismiss you. Dismiss me? It wasn't bidding. Therefore, good Amelia, give me my night and wear and then to do. We must not now displease him. I would you have never seen him. So would not I. My love was so perfect that even his stubbornness, his checks, his frown, have grace and paper. I laid the sheets you bade me on the bed. All one, good father, have a little tower on the mind. If I do die before thee, pretty, shrouded in one of these same sheets. Come, come, you talk. My mother had a maid called Barbary. She was in love, and he she loved proved mad, and did forsake her. She had a song of Willow, an old thing was. But expressed to fortune, she died saying it. That song tonight will not fulfill my mind. I have much, much to do, but go in my head, all at one side, and say it like poor Barbie. Pretty, this back. Shall I go fetch your nightgown? No, I'm pretty here. A very handsome man. He speaks well. I know a lady in Venice that would walk barefoot to Palestine just for a touch of his nether lips. <laughs> Why would not you? 
No, by this heavenly light. I neither by this heavenly light. I might as well do it in the dark. Wouldst thou do such a deed for all the world? The world's a great, uh, the world's a huge thing. It's a great price for a small vice. In troth, I think I will not. In troth, I think I should, and do what I had done. Mary, uh, I would not do such a thing. For a joint ring, nor for measures of lawn, nor for gowns, petticoats, nor caps, nor any petty exhibition. But for the whole world? Why, who would not make their husband a cuckold to make him a monarch? I should venture purgatory for it. Beshrew me, I would do such wrong to the whole world. Why, the wrong is but wrong in the world, and having the world for your labor? This might be wrong in your own world, and you might quickly make it right. I do not think there is any such world. Yes, a dozen, and as many to the vantage as the store of the world they play for. But I do think it's their husband's fault. If wives do fall, say they slack their duties, or pour their treasures into foreign laps, or else break out into peevish jealousies, throwing restraint upon us. Let husbands know that we have sons like them, and not we affection, desires for sport, and frailty as men have. Then let them use us well, or else let them know the ills we do, their ills instruct us so. Good night, good night. Heaven needs such use of sin, not to pick bad from bad, but by bad men.